Whether you are brand new to the Sea of Thieves, are on your way to the esteemed rank of Pirate Legend, or are a seasoned pirate, you will regularly interact with the Gold Hoarder trade. From digging up buried treasure to parkouring your way across the tops of the vaults to secure those captains' chests, the gold trade will line your pockets with gold to spend for days. When you reach level 75, the new outfit available in the clothing shop will be available to you to purchase and style for your own pirate. Today's guide will break down the voyage types, explain how the emissary system works and extra ways to rank up your gold and reputation levels up. Hi there, I'm Wizza, a Sea of Thieves educational content creator. I've been sailing the seas for around three years now and I'm definitely the type of pirate to enjoy a treasure hunt. So hop on board my sloop and let's get sailing with this gold hoarder guide. The first thing you want to want to do to rank up your gold level is to visit the gold hoarder trader at any outpost. There are two types of gold hoarder voyages, treasure maps and vaults. Treasure maps give you that classic pirate experience of getting out a map and digging for your loot. You'll either be given a map with an X marks the spot or you'll receive a riddle. For the map type, head to your quest wheel and take a good look at it. In the beginning, when you vote on your voyage to start it, the maps will appear in the region you are in. So if you vote in the ancient isles, you'll have maps that feature within that area. They could be small or large islands, it is random. As your level increases, so do the number of maps you'll receive to complete the quest in full. I recommend taking a look at the map and then heading back to your map table and matching the two. Personally, I like to circle the islands I need and then uncircle them as I complete the map. When you're at an island you've marked, look for the key points of interest that can help you determine where the X is, such as rocks, how close it is to the beach, specific trees possibly, or where relation it is to the compass. When you think you've found your X, get out your shovel and dig. Some dig spots will spawn skeletons who are trying to protect the loot. With a few hits of your cutlass, they'll quickly be defeated and you can get back to digging. Once you have your chest or trinket, place it on your boat. Another map type will be a riddle. First line of every riddle will tell you which island to go to. So, much like the first map, head to your map table and circle the island you need. When you step foot onto the island the riddle has instructed you to visit, the second line of the riddle will appear. Each clue will give you a location and an action to reveal the next one. Usually, it'll be a specific wall art to find, or a statue, or a point of interest. The final clue will give you a location and instructions to use your compass to map out your steps. To do this, hold your compass out and hold down either the right trigger on Xbox or left click on mouse to hold your compass to your face. Then count the steps in the direction the riddle stated. You should hear a thud to know when you've dug on the right spot. Again, you may have the skeleton spawn on you as you do this. At a base level, chests typically don't sell for a lot of gold. But if you run an emissary, you will rapidly see your gold and reputation count rise. You can purchase an emissary license at level 15 in Gold Hoarder. Once you've bought the license from any gold NPC, you'll have the ability to raise and lower your emissary flag whenever you visit an outpost. Representing the trade as an emissary gives you bonus gold and reputation, which in, in Sea of Thieves is XP. By representing your trade, you are accepting that other ships may and will come and sink you. A broken emissary flag can rank up some heavy gold if you are a reaper on the seas. Every time you touch a chest and then place it on your ship, you will add to your emissary tier. There are five tiers and each one gives you a bonus when you hand in a gold item, which can be a variety of chests or trinkets. As you progress through your levels and hit level 25, you'll unlock a new voyage type. These are called vaults and they offer a large amount of chests in one place. You just need to find the key. To find the vault key, you are given a wayfinder compass when you begin the quest. Follow where the arrow points from island to island. Every time the arrow spins on the spot, get out your shovel and dig. As you do, you'll encounter some unique skeletons. They have the same hit points as normal skeletons, look a little more gold-like. For every clue you dig up on the quest to find the vault key, you'll add a piece to the map where the final X marks the spot is. Sometimes X's can appear on the first map piece, other times it will take all the pieces to come together. Once you've figured out which island the X is on, you'll head there and dig up the treasure chest. This will have the vault key in. And there are three types of vault key. Stone, bronze and gold. The type of key will match how many captain's chests you'll receive in the vault itself and is the indicator of the level you currently are in gold. The key will also say what island the vault is on. There are two vaults per region apart from the wilds that can be directed towards. Typically, if you find the clues in one region, it will send you to another to actually unlock the vault. Parking for the vault can be just as important, depending on the island. For 
For Crescent Isle, I recommend parking here on the west side of the island. For Mermaid's Hideaway, also park on the west side around here. Crook's Hollow, park by the waterfall. You can park right next to the vault entrance at Devil's Ridge. And for Kraken's Fall, I recommend getting a rowboat and using that to load up your treasure as the entrance can be quite hidden. For the Devil's Raw Vaults at Fetcher's Rest and the Ash of Reaches, make sure you keep an eye and an ear out for the volcanoes erupting. Whilst the risk is higher for the Raw Vaults, the treasure inside will be an ashen variety and will go for a higher amount of gold and reputation. So sometimes it is worth the risk. I recommend parking as close as you can and anchoring. So that if the volcano does erupt while you're inside the vault, your ship won't float away. Every vault has a timer of 3 minutes 10 seconds to get as much treasure as you can outside the vault door. I recommend placing chests and trinkets around this point for most effective use of your time. Inside the vault itself, you'll be faced with a puzzle. Four columns will be in front of you. The last column to the right will have the final answer. You have to match the three other columns to the one at the end. In the vault, there'll be three medallions. Find each one and place them in the altar, which will then reveal which you should turn the columns to. But if you find one medallion, you can skip out the rest and figure out the final puzzle. Once you've completed the puzzle, a secret door will reveal the chest of ancient tributes. When the vault's timer is nearly finished, you'll hear the door shake. After you've finished, this means it's time to get out of there. Once you've finished, load up the treasure onto your boat and you'll have plenty of time to do this. World events are fantastic for breaking up your adventure with something a little different. You may come across other crews whilst you complete them, but the end result will be a mixture of loot. Ashen Winds, in particular, drop the Chest of Rage, the Skeleton Fleet drops Captain's Chests, and the Ghost Fleet slash Burning Blade event drops Chests of the Damned. All of these typically go for a higher gold and reputation amount than your average gold hoarder loot. I have guides on each of the world events coming soon. Subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of these. As a captain, you can also undertake the Pirate Legend Voyage for Cursed Treasure, where you have the chance of digging up the Chest of Sorrow, Chest of Rage, Chest of Boundless Sorrow, Chest of Thousand Grogs, or Chest of Legends. If you run a Gold Hoarder emissary whilst completing this type of quest, you'll rank up to Grade 5 in no time and earn a ton of gold while you're at it. You can also visit the quest board on any of the outposts or sea posts. These operate like X marks the spot voyages, as mentioned earlier, but players themselves can add maps. You can bury your own treasure and leave it for future crews to find if you so choose. Captains you find on islands drop orders to dig up loot, but these won't always drop a piece of gold hoarder treasure. Then there are treasuries and fortresses. These are fairly quick arenas that unlock vaults full of varied treasure. You won't gain as much loot as world events, but they can help you with boosting your emissary grade. So can megalodons and skeleton chips that randomly spawn upon you. Both are great for a range of items. All in all, the gold hoarder trade is one of the easier trades to low up to 75. If you want to find pirates to sail with to help you along your gold journey, then join my Discord server. The link is in my description box. If you've liked today's video, please give it a like, comment and subscribe for future Sea of Thieves content. See you on the seas!